Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Broxtow series, 10 parishes with an industrial past running along the western fringe of Nottinghamshire. Where are we today, viewers? Welcome back to the borough of Broxtow, everybody, and to the first of its towns. I hope you're ready for a lengthy route around this place. I'm going to be absolutely knackered by the end of this one. Welcome to... Kimberley! Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Kimberley, one of the towns of Broxtow, located on the western fringes of the city of Nottingham. Like many other of the settlements in Broxtow, the history of the town is tied up mainly with the mining and lace industries, aided and abetted of course by the coming of the railways. Its history goes back much further than that though. It was recorded in the Doomsday Book as Chine Marley, and the main landholder at that time was William Peverell, who owned large swathes of land in Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. Over the years, Kimberley has expanded to merge almost imperceptibly into neighbouring towns and villages to form a continuous urban landscape from Nottingham to Hena, encompassing the towns of the Erewash Valley. Kimberley's landmarks are plentiful. For a start, look no further than the War Memorial, easily the most recognisable structure in the town, and a depiction of it is used as the logo of the town's main school. Then there's a 100 foot high water tower built to supply Nottingham with drinking water from the Derwent Valley. It also has some railway history, including two old stations. What really sells this one though would be the buildings of the former Hardy and Hanson's Brewery. After all, it is the business which made Kimberley very, very famous. There's also lots of hills in this one as well. Kimberley definitely ain't flat. Let's go. We begin our journey around Kimberley in an area called Swingate, located to the south of the town centre and the A610. Our first landmark is a bus stop. The number 27 we met in Orsworth calls here too, on its way into town or to Ilkeston. Swingate has a school. This is Kimberley Primary and Nursery School. We'll see a secondary school later around this route too. Swingate also has one of the many pubs in Kimberley. Refurbished last year, this is the White Lion, a popular dog-friendly pub. On the corner opposite was one of the best parish notice boards ever, which had these awesome clips. Tick it off, folks. Swingate isn't a village. It could be considered a Kimberley suburb, though. There is another village within the parish boundaries. That would be Babington. This dead end at the end of Swingate leads to it. It's a tiny hamlet with a cluster of houses. A special section is coming on Babington later, but for now, via this massive house, we're making our way to a big landmark. This is Swingate Water Tower. It opened in 1950 to supply drinking water to Nottingham from the Derwent Valley. 
It's no longer operational, but at 100 feet high it still dominates the landscape. Earlier this year it was awarded Grade 2 listed status. The tower stands next to a reservoir which can hold almost 5 million gallons of water. It's flanked by these terraced streets. These link us to Swingate itself, the road that this part of the town is named after. Next up, we have to cross a bridge. Now, Swingate might be a separate area of Kimberley these days, but at one time it was all one thing and it was split in half by this road right here. This is a major road that links Nottingham to Ripley and it's the A610. And I used this earlier today to get to Cossel and Orsworth. We're going to cross this now and head into Kimberley Town Centre. Swingate has now become the high street. On the corner of Greens Lane is Cherub's Day Nursery, which was refurbished in 2020. Greens Lane used to be called Factory Lane. It sports a Sainsbury's supermarket on one side and a shopping precinct on the other. The precinct stands on the site of a Victorian framework knitting factory built for the manufacture of lace, demolished in 1983. These shops are a stark contrast to the buildings which formerly stood here. At the end of the road is Kimberley's War Memorial. An unusual landmark to say the least, this is the most recognisable structure in the town. It was given Grade 2 listing in 1987. The unique six-column dome memorial topped with a clock was designed by the Nottingham architects Brewell and Bailey. It was built in 1920 by stonemasons Pask and Thorpe. The total cost of the finished memorial was £1,200. It's sited on what was formerly a spring-fed pond, which in 1890 was filled in and replaced by a stone water trough. The doghouse pub opposite used to be known as the Lord Clyde. Its entrance is odd as it's on a stagecoach disembarking hump. Now we've moved along Main Street towards the centre of town. This handy sign tells us which way to go for what. Okay, we'll continue through the town centre now. It's a biggish town centre this, so basically we're just going to weave our way around it before heading north uh, to catch our next area. Opposite me here we can see the library. There it is, it's this building right here. So we're going to walk past that. There looks to be a, an old chapel of some description next door to it. I'll soon find out what that is. This was a primitive Methodist chapel. It opened in 1876 and closed in 1962. It's been a supermarket, bar and restaurant since then. Main Street continues to the northwest, but we're not following it directly. That's because Kimberley has three or four central streets. Next is Regent Street, a terraced road which joins High Street at the top via a footpath. Look to your right as you head up here. The tall religious building you see by doing so is the former St Paul's Methodist Chapel, which was built in 1884. By 1973 it was in use by Kimlin Holdings. After undergoing some later modifications, it's now become a residential property. To get back to Main Street, we head next down James Street. This is signposted at the bottom as a Victorian shopping area. It's not wrong, James Street has some brilliant historic shop fronts and also features some Victorian style street lamps and bollards. As well as the main memorial, on the wall of one of the shops is a plaque for some of the men who died during the wars. Now of course with a place this size it's very difficult to try and catch every single shop and that's why I don't attempt it. However, I'm definitely capturing this one. On the end of James Street you have the Old English Chippy, number one for fish and chips, so it says on its door. I'm pretty sure the locals around here will probably agree with that. Next we have two pubs almost dead opposite each other. This is the Gate Inn and its near neighbour is the Queen's Head. Keep all these pubs in mind. The reason for Kimberley having so many will become very obvious soon. 
Next, we have Tolbar Square, which contains a number of mosaics depicting the town's history, including a windmill and a colliery. Main Street then continues with a few more shops and a post office and a public toilet block just out of shot to the right. The road starts to get less built up now and begins to bend to the left. Notice in front of us all the new built houses. These sit on land that belonged to Kimberley's biggest business, literally. You'll see what I mean in a short while. Holy Trinity Church next. This was built in 1847 of local sandstone, a typical building material of the time in this area. There have been minor changes since then, but it's fundamentally the same building. Its organ dates back to 1937. And dead opposite the church, you have this building here. Now, I don't know what this is, but I suspect this is an old school, uh, just going by the, the architectural style of it. And it's very much abandoned and overgrown, which is really quite a shame because that's the kind of building that would just look great as a, as a, as a new office block or um, being turned into some kind of apartment or, or just as a, a general residence. You know, you could split it into two houses, one this side, one the other side, but at the moment, it's just there looking a bit forlorn to be honest with you and this stands at the bottom of a very steep hill if i just show you this is church hill so you've got the church on the left and that building on the right and i drove up this uh, earlier to get to the start point thankfully i don't need to walk up here <laughs> But uh, there will be a hill involved somewhere in order for me to get back to the start. I hope it's just, I just hope it's not as steep as this. Off Eastwood Road, there's a little spur which takes you past Kettlebrook Lodge, which is the local scout building. Behind it is Kimberley Depot, which I think is a recycling centre. It's not easy to tell though, as I could go no further than here. Eastwood Road then passes between the depot and a bridge abutment. This once carried the Erewash Valley Railway Line. Next, it's the oriental sounding Hall on Wong open space, whose name apparently means Mr. Hall's home piece of land. There are many more open spaces like this in Kimberley, including Millfield, which has the remains of an old windmill. At the northern tip of the park, there's a newish housing estate which has streets which all share a common theme. They're all named after famous racecourses, including Beverley, Ascot, Aintree, Weatherby, Haydock and Kempton. Next, it's Moores Lane, where there's a co-op this is fairly new, having opened its doors for the first time in 2016. Then we come to Hardy Street. Remember that name, because in a few moments' time, you'll understand its importance. This street slopes downhill again and has some magnificent buildings, including these tall brick efforts near a school. The school is named after a local spring called the Holly Well. There was a second spring nearby called the Alley Spring too. Okay, so that block of housing was called Monsters Terrace. And that gives you a big clue as to what's coming next. Kimberley was famous for its brewery and some of those brewery buildings still stand at the bottom of Hardy Street. That's next. At the bottom of Hardy Street, you'll come to some new build streets which have a certain beer related theme. That's because all these old buildings nearby belong to the oldest independent brewery in Nottinghamshire. It was originally two adjoining breweries named Hardy's and Hansen's. These merged to form one big company in 1930. It ceased brewing in 2006. Some of the buildings have been demolished, but a lot remain, including this bridge over Hardy Street. Samuel Robinson began brewing in Kimberley in a bakehouse in 1832. His business would eventually become Hardy's Brewery. In 1847, Stephen Hansen built his brewery on nearby Brewery Street. Both used water from the Alley Spring. 
They would both thrive independently until their merger in 1930, after increasing pressure from larger brewing companies. In 2006, Hardy's and Hansen's and all of its public houses were sold in a multi-million pound deal to Green King. Production has now moved to Bury St Edmunds and the brewery site is currently being developed into brand new residences. Now by passing the brewery's buildings, you've also come over one of Kimberley's old railway lines. It used to have, I think it's either two or three stations, I think it's two. One of them is here. This is the station that was on the Midland line. It's called Midland Station House. And nowadays it's number 19 and number 21 Station Road. Can't access that one because obviously it's private property, but you can tell it's a station house, obviously. <laughs> so uh, there we go, that's that. That's right next to the brewery. We're gonna go and find the other one shortly because they weren't too far away from each other. Kimberley's railway history revolves around two stations and two lines, both of which are close to the old brewery. Between them is the Nelson and Railway pub, which derives its name from its original full title, the Lord Nelson Railway Hotel. It's on Station Road, and this is the station in question. Known as Kimberley East, this was on the Great Northern Railway. Originally named just Kimberley, it was in operation between 1875 and 1955 for passengers and closed fully in 1964. The other station we've just seen was on the Erewash Valley Line. Known as Kimberley West, it closed to passengers in 1917. Here, the station buildings have been converted to private residences and the site of the platforms is now occupied by a car park. Its goods yard became a timber storage facility, but has now been turned into this housing estate next door, named The Sidings. So what happened to the line? Well, we've seen part of this line already. It was the one that crossed Benelly Viaduct. Here in Kimberley, the stretch between the station and Newdigate Street has been turned into a local nature reserve. There's still some railway-related artefacts in here, including a set of railway buffers halfway along its length. It eventually comes to an end at a massive cliffside where the cutting has been filled in under the Newdigate Street Road Bridge. Thankfully, there's some steps provided at this end so you can easily reach street level once again. It's a steep old climb though. Well, I said there'd be a hill involved somewhere, didn't I? I guess I found it. Thank Christ there were steps because I wouldn't have liked to try and walk up a, a slope no matter how steep it was. Next up we have the Kimberley School. A lot of viewers may remember this as Kimberley Comprehensive School. Founded in 1946, this has capacity for almost 1,400 children and includes a brand new sixth form block opened in 2020. Around the back of the school is the Kimberley Leisure Centre, where you can potentially get a free swim in the school holidays. The school's emblem is the War Memorial. The Liberal MP Paul Rowan taught science here between 1977 and 1980. A few steps away is Kimberley Institute Cricket Club. Founded in 1878, they compete in the Nottinghamshire Cricket Board Premier League. Newdigate Street continues with Kimberley Health Centre, one of two medical facilities in the town. The other is coming shortly. The well-used Parish Hall is on this street as well. You'd have thought a town this size would have a bigger communal venue, right? Next, it's Victoria Street and the busy Rumble Tums Cafe, which serves homemade cakes and excellent fair trade coffee. Victoria Street has a car park, one of six you can find in the town. This one has 35 spaces and is free for the first hour. The end of Victoria Street emerges down the side of the Doghouse Pub and the War Memorial comes back into view. A left turn and we're faced with Gillett's Funeral Directors next, which occupies a former United Free Methodist Chapel. 
and that's on Nottingham Road, an extension of Main Street which leads eastwards towards Nuttall and the M1. That brings us to that second doctor's surgery. At number 11 Nottingham Road is the Hamer Medical Centre. Okay, so we've turned off Nottingham Road now and it's brought me to the Stag Ground, which is the home of Kimberley Miners Welfare Football Club. This is where they play. And they play apparently in red and black stripes if the logo is anything to go by. There it is right there. 1926, these guys were founded. Let's talk a bit about the football club before we head off to our final section of the walk. Kimberley Miners Welfare Football Club were founded in 1926, a year after the establishment of the town's Miners Welfare facility. After their establishment, the club initially played at Mill Field until moving to a very basic ground at Digby Street in 1932. In 2012, they moved to the Stag Ground, which has previously been used by another team, the now defunct Kimberley Town. Kimberley Miners Welfare are now the sole team in the town and play in the United Counties League Premier Division North. The Stag Ground is named after this pub, the Stag Inn, a wattle and daub Tudor building which dates back to 1737. We're back to Nottingham Road again, looking back into the town centre. I've saved the absolute best until last. Okay, last section, and unfortunately I found another hill. Time to go to the chapel on the hill. Another uphill slog then as we make our way back to Swingate. This way. Kimberley Cemetery is the last thing our route passes through as we climb one final hill back towards Swingate. This is Knoll Hill, and at its summit there stands one last fantastic building, the Grade 2 listed Chapel on the Hill. This was built in 1883 by local builders Shaw and Brassington at a cost of £1480. It was designed by Richard Charles Sutton. Sutton was the man who constructed the scaffolding for the last public execution in Nottingham, that of Richard Thomas Parker in 1864. This chapel has stood here for 140 years, on the highest hill in the town, quietly watching everything that's happened in Kimberley. You can do that too, and you can even read all about what you see, thanks to this outstanding information board next to it. Those who say this industrial heartland is anything short of beautiful, clearly haven't seen it from Knoll Hill. It's lovely up here. This iconic chapel stands proud amongst the graves which span five and a half acres. Many of them have interesting stories to tell. All that remains for us is to cross the A610 again back into Swingate via a footbridge that links Knoll Hill to Knoll Lane. So here we are then once again crossing the A610 as we make our way back into Swingate and to where we started. That's taken me about two hours and there is one last landmark that I would like to share with you, and that would be another park. That would be Knoll Park, which is right here. As you cross the bridge, back into Swingate, there you go, there's the park right there. And you can see Swingate Water Tower in the far distance. That's been a brilliant little route round that. I've absolutely loved it. Kimberley, in my opinion, is one of the best places in Nottinghamshire. Let's not forget Babington, of course. Located to the south of the town, Babington gave its name to Babington Colliery, but that was located some two and a half miles away. The village is not really anything more than just a cluster of houses at the end of Babington Lane. That said, amongst them is Babington Rescue, which occupies Babington Hall. It was established in February 1993 to cater for stray and abandoned dogs. Since then, it's found homes for nearly 10,000 canines who came into their care through no fault of their own. They deal with almost 1,000 dogs a year, a figure which represents more than 1% of the total number of stray and abandoned dogs in the UK. That's according to the Dogs Trust. Babington Hall used to have stables for horses and kennels for hounds, both of which were used for hunting. 
These have now been converted into a large interior only kennels, which is still referred to as the stables by their team. Via Nottingham Road, we're now making our way towards the next one. That's been Kimberley, and I do genuinely believe that to be one of my favourites in Nottinghamshire so far. So much to talk about, so much to see, and lots to attract people to it. Let's see if the next one has the same effect. Bye for now. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>